Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Um, I realize this may be new to you. It's new to me in terms of uh, just, you know, having people actually watching um, live. So we'll play by here and see how it goes. Um, the, the morning section went pretty well. And um, so for the record, this is um, uh, Design 220, Introduction to Drawing for Designers at the School of Design at San Francisco State University. Today is the um, 10th of March, 2020, and we're doing this uh, via Zoom um, due to the um, virus problem. Um, so I'll just say a couple of things. Uh, because of this change, we'll, we can officially stop working on the final cube, even though you can work on your own if you want. There are videos online. Um, on YouTube, but I will uh, for now just shift to the drawings and then we'll, um, uh, you know, we'll get back to the hands-on thing um, together when we get back together again, or you can try, you know, doing them on your own. The deadlines for now will just be very flexible and it might even be at the end of the semester if things, you know, get worse. So um, we'll see how that goes. Okay. So don't worry about that part, but do get your, um, uh, um, you know, the, um, the rough cube if you can, because that might be helpful. Um, if not, you should at least remember your section so that we can, so that you can do um, your drawing, okay? So I will switch to, um, to the um, view here on my board, uh, which requires a little bit of a trick. Let's see if that works. I have to flip my camera. Upside down, bring it over, and there we go. So that's pretty good. Um, so I can use this as a title slide. Um, okay. Okay. So that's it. So the, the, the drawing we'll do today is called cube isometric. We're going to have two views and um, I'll go over it um, various steps quickly and then we'll do them. Um, I'll do them in more detail. And uh, what it will be basically it's two isometric views of your cube. So let's assume this is your cube. Um, Okay. And the two views will be uh, not the same. The view on the left will be a view that is uh, symmetrical relative to the center axis. Uh, so it's like a mirror image. Um, and that is, if you had looked at your cube, um, let's see, yeah, I would, normally I have the tall part of the back and the, and the low part of the front. Um, so as you can see, my view would be be symmetrical this way. And what happens with that view is that things get um, sometimes not very clear how the shape actually is. And that's why we can take the, uh, that same view and rotate it, um, let's see, yeah, 90 degrees, okay? So that the second view will be a view that is um, uh, where the where the left half is not going to be similar to the the left half it's not similar to the right half it's different okay and that will give us a little more clues as to what the shape is uh, just a couple of quick things we're not going to draw the hidden lines because actually um, that's that yeah it's it's extra work we don't need to do it um, I feel also it flattens the drawing a little bit but we are drawing all the uh, construction lines and um, uh, and then we darken the actual lines okay so um, I'll show you quickly what I did this morning for the other section um, one thing that's very important is that we do uh, a little storyboard once again, okay? Starting with the, uh, with the original section, okay? Your original thumbnail sketch, because that will give us again a reference point, okay? 
So um, what I would do is, and I'm gonna do this again now for the purpose of the video, I'm gonna quickly draw that. Um, then what we'll do is try to figure out what these two views are going to be. And we can do it by, um, here um, we can do it by quickly sketching um, either freehand uh, a cube or um, better yet do it on the um, this is the joint that I did this morning uh, put tracing paper here and sketch sketch the cube that way in terms of having a sketch that's a little more um, precise um, let me, maybe I should do this in order. Let me step back and actually start building the drawing itself, okay? So what we do is we do two circles, which are not really necessary, but it shows you how they can be, the cubes can be built out of these, uh, out of two circles, which then become two hexagons, which then become the cube. And these are the spacing. So once you do your border on the, um, Let's see if I can adjust this, okay. Sorry, my camera doesn't want to cooperate now. Hopefully I'll edit this out later in the... Uh, Oh, one more thing um, is that at home, I don't know if you have a board like I do here. Um, it, would, it would be nice if you had like one of those art boards, um, not necessarily with the straight edge. Unfortunately, they are expensive. Um, but if you have your kitchen table, you could still use it and you could use a T-square to use as your straight edge to go up and down. Um, and that way you can then do all your other lines um, like that. I'll have to get straight here for some reason. Yeah. Um, but if you don't have this one either, you have to use then two triangles, okay? to set up your drawing and use the two triangles in such a way. Okay, most of the time you'll need this triangle to do everything else, but you'll need a horizontal um, edge and a horizontal triangle to... Um... Okay, there we go. So why don't I just go ahead and set up the drawing? Um, if I can get the camera to be straight. Oh, here we go. Now I think I know what's happening. Sorry, folks, just give me a second. I'll edit this out from the video once I... Um... Okay, so I'm gonna set up my drawing and I'm gonna use this dimension to center my two 
uh, cubes at five inches from each other, the centers, and then this is centered between the title block and the border at the top, okay? So let me just take my, my drawing first here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, while you can leave the drawing kind of free, it really pays to actually tape it down because you're going to just, um, you know, not have to worry about things moving around. Um, so real quick, I'm going to measure, um, again, just for location, half inch at the top, half inch at the bottom, three quarters, and then I have left seven and a quarter. So I have three and five eighths is my center. Um, so I'll just draw that for reference. Okay, I'm not going to draw the entire title block now. And I'm gonna do my lines dark already. Um, so that's my center result, uh, top to bottom. Okay, and I'm gonna do my, so if I, that's my center left to right. I just measured that and now I'm gonna put my, oops, here, wait a minute, two and a half. Again, six, uh, five inches apart. And then I said we can do two uh, circles um, with the compass and they're gonna be two inches uh, of radius, uh, circles of, of radius two inches. Only to show that, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, that the whole thing could be constructed, you know, using the circle without without the triangle. I mean, at some point you'll need the triangle, but. Um, ooh. Something happened there. This is just a nice way to locate your cubes. Not sure why it just it doesn't look centered. No, I guess it is. Okay. Um, and then using um, let's draw my verticals. You see, I'm using my T-square now to get a straight edge um, as a base for my verticals. Okay. And now, just to show, so this would be my bottom corner. So I would have to do it right here. So if I do two more circles, uh, it's basically the, um, the hexagon construction, if you recall, okay. And again, it's just a nice way to build it. Uh, not absolutely necessary, oops. But I'm just showing you now that if I then use my triangle because of the hexagon, let's see, internal angle is what? Oh gosh, 30, 60, 120, I guess. I can use then my my triangle here to connect the points um, without having to measure two inches. I could have done, I could have started with a line here and measure two inches um, and then go from there to 
this was a little more um, elegante. Okay, so. Um, I'm, I'm darkening my lines again, probably more than you should, just because they, so they show in the video, but uh, you shouldn't do them so dark because they're gonna be in the way of visualizing your, your actual shape later, okay? Um, so I'm just finding all my spots that I had found earlier with the compass, they should all match up using just this triangle um, in the same, pretty much same vein, same angle. And we have now two hexagons, which which is the shape that a cube in a, a cube in isometric looks like if you were to, um, you know, close one eye and not have perspective and whatnot. Okay, so now they're hexagons. As soon as I do the other ones, they're going to be cubes. Uh, we're just going to use the bottom part of the. Um, of the cubes, of course, because we're splitting it. And there we are. Okay, so that would be the setup, right? Um, what we'll do next is we'll draw the two cubes, those two views. However, before we can do this, we need to know like where are we go we're going to be, right? And because it's a little tricky to figure it out correctly immediately with the fine lines, meaning with the true lines that we'll really need, uh, that's where tracing paper is going to come in very handy and we can solve the view, meaning like figure out what exactly it will look like first by hand, sketching it, and then we can just use that as a, um, as a copy, okay? So in other words, I did this by hand earlier, and I'm gonna do it again to figure it out. I'll show you how, and once I have this, it's easier to do that, right? Because I don't have to guess, I can just simply um, bring it back into view, okay? So let's go back to the, uh, to the storyboard we were talking about. You definitely have to have these around, uh, especially now if you don't have your, your um, your rough cube, right? Because it's at school and you'd rather not go to school because everything else is not happening. And so whatever you do, again, keep, keep track of your beginning image, which is your very, very first design. And in this case, um, this is the cube. I'm calling it phase two, one. And then I go around symmetrically. That's phase two. And then three and four are going to be my back faces. So right now, three and four are to the right here. Okay, very, very important, knowing where to start and how we're gonna move, okay? Um, so let's do this now by taking tracing paper. This kind of on view here, let's see if I can move it a little bit. I'll lift this up there and I'll take a piece of tracing paper and just because I know. Um, I'll tell you what, since this, the second half, um, not the second half, but the asymmetrical view um, gives us more clues, I'm going to start with that, okay, and then I'll do this one, which is easier. Um, so I'm going to start in the middle, and I know that the um, maybe I should take the back and start here. Now I'm now I'm thinking. Um, actually, no. I, I take it back. Let's start with the easier one um, because again, just because it's it's best to keep things kind of in order, I guess, and I'm afraid myself I'll get confused. So what I'll do is I'll sketch that grid. I'll get rid of my... Um, 
what I can do is get this square grid at an angle here. So what I can do is quickly sketch it based on my setup. Okay. And then I can just do lines this way to get a grid. Okay. And then I just plot it, right? I start in the middle, so that means here. Then I go up one and across two, kind of like Battleship. Uh, although for the front here, you don't really need to because it's, it's fairly easy to see where the line should go, right? Later, it will be a little harder. So here we go. I just keep doing that. So now I'm there. I need to go there. Um, and like that. Okay. And as soon as I complete, um, so you should really do this step because it's good practice also for any kind of project. I know because, well, because I've, I've experienced it. I know that actually, if I look at the cube, um, like this, I know that this point corresponds, uh, to the center also visually, right? So what we can do is um, immediately connect those lines to the center. So whatever I have drawn now on the front, I connect it to the center. Okay. And I, I can be pretty confident that that's what I'm going to see. Now, uh, for the other side, back, here's what we could do. We can now go around right and i can do that and i can draw a grid but now i'm turning the corner here right i'm actually turning the corner here so i'm going to the back and if if i do the grid i have to work it's almost working in reverse um, see how that would work and that's where battleship comes in handy right because right now with this design i am at the half point here which means i'm there and now i need to keep going so while here i go in a straight line here i have to go this way so from there i need to go two across and one down so two across and one down would be here and it happens to be a point that's already kind of taken then i need to go up two and across one so up two and across one and you see i'm moving in the opposite direction because i'm behind um and then i need to go one down and, and one across and that's here so now i can i can connect that this line matches so now i do the same on the other side I do a grid for that side and I invert the process. Now I keep going. I'm here, one up and one across, up and across, and then one across and two down, and across and two down, and back to that point. And then the last one would reconnect here. Um, so, so now I can, I see the pretty much that's the view. Okay. And once I've solved it, and again, it looks funny, it looks kind of flat because all these lines, right? You're not seeing a little bit of this. It's exactly a straight line and everything matches, right? This line matches here. So it's, it's looking strange, like right here, this spot. You know, it's that spot. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump ahead and do the second one. But for the second one, I'm going to show you a trick, which actually I just came up with yesterday when I was thinking about, oh, how can I make this a little simpler, easier to understand and make it, um, you know, less trial and error. So I will keep this up there. Let's see what the other view will look like. Um, so that would be the view that we turn 90 degrees. So it would be this one, right? 
So that means the T's edge now is the edge between phase number two and phase number three. So that's this edge, okay? So in my sketch, I'll, I'll concentrate my attention on this axis, okay? So I can put this away because now I know I have to concentrate on that, oops, on this, okay? Um, so again, I take tracing paper, I do this, do this here, let's see. Get in the way. Um, yeah, but now I have to think of my little trick that I came up with. So I have to, I'm going to do it in the center of my tracing paper. Um, so let's go ahead and do the same thing. So we're going to, we're going to highlight this area with my grid. It really helps actually to draw your cubes, just the blank cube first, because then you have the, um, uh, yeah, the structure right there for yourself, right? And then I, I do my grid lines. Okay. So why don't I just also move this here? So we're really, really, really working in parallel here, okay? So again, it's fairly easy to do this now here from there because I can use the grid, right? I know that's at the half point. Uh, I go up two and across one, and then down one and across two, right? Then I keep doing this, I turn the corner um, and so I'm here, I have to go down one and across two, just that, and then up two and across one, right there, and then one and one down. So I think that's good. Um, I immediately do this because it gives me a little, makes me feel good <laughs> that I get a little bit finished. Um, and again, now I could connect these lines to the center or however, uh, I don't know, maybe I, I want to wait, uh, but certainly the first two, like this one, this one, and probably this one. Okay, now, um, I could repeat the process, right? I could do what I did earlier, right? Where I did this part and then I use another piece of tracing paper. But notice how in this one too, I was forced to then think backwards, right? In relation to my drawing, because I had to invert my direction. So what I thought about yesterday was this, what if I just make my tracing paper a kind of an unfolding, a little bit like, a, you know, pretend you have a house and you open it up. And so this morning, what I did was, what if I draw then the other face like this, right? And when I did that, I said, okay, and then we fold it and let's see what happens. And actually what happens is nothing happens because it falls back exactly in the same spot. So instead, Funny enough, rather not intuitively, what we need to do now is we need to sketch these other two faces going off in the same direction. And you'll see how that's surprisingly effective. So, uh, run out of paper here. Sorry, I need to do a tag. Do a little. Okay, so what I want to do, in fact, is draw my next, you know, the two squares that go to the back. So in other words, now I'm looking at it this way. I want to draw this square that's running around behind it. But as you, as you can see here, it's flat. So it's going to be flat here too, except at this funny, funny angle. So let's see what happens. If I sketch my, my face there, 
the cool thing about this now that I don't have to reverse, I don't have to think backwards. I can simply continue my path, right? So let's see, we're here. And now I just copy, I just transfer that here. So one up and across, two down and one across, two one up and two across. And now I'm going to do the same on the other side. So again, I'm gonna sketch sketch my um, my face, my grid, and I'm going to put it again there. And let's see what that looks like. So I'm here. So I'm doing all this work because then you don't have to uh, think when you actually draw your final. So then I go over here. And then I go over there, right? So from here, it's two up and one across. And then from here, it's one down and two across, one down and two across. So the nice thing about this is that we're going exactly, we're just staying on the same flat surface. Um, and now it will magically help us determine what the back will look like because all these fellas shape. Um, along just like I would be folding a real cube. The funny thing is that this cube is going to look like it's been stretched in a funny way. Oh, it's the back. And of course, it's an impossible cube, right? Because it's going, it's going off kind of in four dimensional space or something. But what's really helpful about it is that when I now flatten it this way, I can see the back of my cube without needing to uh, guess. Um, That is now I can do, I can immediately see at least what the what the embroidered line is, and then try to connect to the center. Um, so what I'll do is I'll start with the uh, points that are for sure known. So that is the uh, the back here. Notice that I'm going to wait on that one. Well, actually, what I could do is just connect it very lightly. Right. But then don't darken it yet. Um, by the way, we um we are we're not showing this line. Right? Because that's the line that we're going to eliminate by optimizing this into a single surface. So for our cube, that is this big shape here. So we're going to avoid, we're not going to draw that line. Um, so that's it. Um, so in, in two minutes, we're going to take a little break. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is, is, is just see. Um, all lines, by the way, remember, they continue straight through the center of the cube and all lines are parallel. So this line is going to be parallel to this one. Now the back starts here. So that's going to hide. So these two lines right here. And this one unfortunately does match that point too. So it looks a little bit flat there, but there's no way around it. That's just the way the design is. But this line stops there and this other line stops there. Okay, so with this, um, with this little trick of doing this funny business here of extending it sideways relative to what the you know real thing looks like, uh, we have achieved the fact that we can we can really literally visualize it almost if it were at like a, an X-ray view. Okay, so this is the view. Um, This is the view, that's this one. 
right? Yeah, it's roughly like that. Okay, um, and now uh, I'll just I'll just quickly make a clean one because yeah, just because it's easier that way. So, make one more piece of trace. So basically, this is kind of doing, this is like the version of the rough cube in three dimensions, right? So this, this will be our, our rough drawing before we can actually uh, draw it with the tools. So that's my right side view. And the other one was that was the other one. Okay. So now I can sort of just connect these two together. And I'll have them for my reference. And from that we can build everything. They're not at the right distance now, perhaps, but this is this is the correct. What we're looking for, and it's going to be so much easier now that we know what the real edges will be shown uh, than to try to guess as we do the technical drawing. OK, um, so why don't we take a 10 minutes break and um, I'll come back. Um, well, I'll stay here. I'll leave the video on because I don't want to mess up anything. But um, I'll just write here, 10 minute break. Um, back at um, 2.20, okay? All right. And uh, the chat is still on, so you can still um, so Tracy asks, will I be recording? Yes, I am. I am recording. Um, so I'll reply to her. Um, yeah, and so far it looks like the recording will be good if this one works like it did this morning. Um, uh, yes, I'll post the video also. I'll send a link. Um, so I don't know where it sent. It sits the video. I think it zooms um, servers, but um, but yeah, it will be available. So don't worry. Okay, I'll find it here too. Okay, so let's just say, yeah, 220, okay, we'll be back. And then uh, we'll probably have another half hour, so we should be done before three. And after that, I will, um, I'll just leave it on for a while, see if people have questions. Um, and I can always let you join in too, you know, if, if we have to like with voice as well. Okay, all right, I'll see you in 10 minutes, okay. Uh, somebody's asking whether they can borrow a board. Uh, yes, if you promise to bring it back, because I'm afraid they will disappear. Um, hmm. Okay, I'll just reply to this person. Yeah, the problem with the boards is that we have two classes, and so there's not enough for everyone. Um, um, yeah. Uh, 
Justin is asking the proposition of the cube. I'm not, I'm not sure what he means. Maybe he means this. the recording. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming back. Um, we're now going to finish the, uh, the drawing, doing it with the technical tools, okay, based on what we, um, on what we sketched um, by hand. I just want to say a couple of things, um, just in general, again, uh, yeah, don't worry about, I mean, do your drawings, uh, don't worry about like immediate deadlines. We'll have to figure out, you know, when we come back, how we're gonna, you know, how we're gonna meet and all that. So um, keep working on the cube itself if you want, um, uh, either the rough end or the final, but uh, for the final, uh, there are videos on YouTube, you can uh, check, um, but uh, you know, if, if we do meet again soon, I hope we can um, we can go over that together. You can also email me and send me stuff and ask me questions. You can also make appointments, by the way, with um, um, the uh, you know my advising appointments. Okay, so I'm just checking to make sure. Yeah, it is it is going the recording. Um, okay, so I'll switch back now to the board and we'll, we'll finish it. So this should take probably 15, 20 more minutes. So we should be done early. Um, and then, like I said, we'll, we'll keep the, um, I'll keep it open so that people have questions. They can ask me questions. Okay. All right. Let me do this uh, somersault again here. Forget how. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, I just quickly summarize again what, what we did before. Uh, we're drawing the cube um, in isometric view, two different views, one symmetrical, one asymmetrical. And, um, this is what the final drawing will look like. Um, it's five inches apart, each center of the cube. It's a circle. Uh, they're inscribed in a circle with two inches radius. Um, uh, the border is up there and it's three and five um, eighths actually from the top for this line, more or less in the center of your window. Uh, okay, so keep your, um, keep your um, construction lines light if you can. I'm making them dark for the video uh, because it looks nice if you, sh if you leave them there. Uh, this line, for example, is too dark here, okay? In fact, why don't I erase it so that it looks better. There, it's already better. Um, and uh, okay, so the way we're gonna do that is that um, we, um, I'm just going to go through the steps again. This would be a good new introduction again. Um, so remember that we had your section, your original section, and um, we mirror it original design, we mirror it to get the first pair. And then once we had the pair, we rotate it 180 over at this point to get our full design, okay? So that was our full design, which was this, okay? And once we have this, again, making sure that we have a reference point, in this case, the beginning frame, let's call it, of our storyboard, um, marking them one, two, three, four, it's a good idea. And then for the two views, this is gonna be the first view, the symmetrical view, this is gonna be the asymmetrical view. Um, so we, we used the, uh, the cube that we drew earlier, just the other box to quickly draw a grid. Uh, once we did that, 
we figured out. Um, we did that, and then to figure out, figure out the back, we did one more. Now I don't have it, and we came up with this design. Now that that was tricky because we had to we had to draw the grid here, we had to go around, etc. So instead, for the second one, what we did, I discovered this new little trick just for today, special, the virus special, I guess it could be called, where we could draw, oops, um, we could draw our sequence, our storyboard sequence at an angle, uh, and we could then don't have to worry about going backwards. So once we did that, um, and by the way, at first I did it this way, but it didn't work because it was match here. Instead, by going all the way straight, we made a nice cube once we, once we fold it, which allowed me to see the pattern all around. So I could draw it if I'm literally going around this building, around this box, and then I can fold this up. The house into uh, rather in um, in um, X-ray vision, okay? Uh, because by doing that, so much easier it was to figure it out, right? To figure out where all the lines had to go. So having finished that one, the right view, the left view we can simply now take this and draw it with, with the tool, okay? That, at this point, we don't need much else. Uh, we just have to match. We match that drawing on our, um, our boxes here, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna check my pencil. It's a little bit dull. If you were at school and you had this tool, you could sharpen it this gadget but since you're probably not at school um, a little piece of sandpaper is good let's see what my sandpaper is it disappeared hold on a sec and this by the way just for the record is um, the one object I took from my teacher's uh, house when I visited his widow after he died. I asked him if I could take one little thing and this was a little, a little gadget for sharpening um, your lead. Um, so it's, it's very worn out now because I use it a lot. Anyway, it's got nice sandpaper that's slightly coarse and then it's got finer sandpaper. And then it's got a little felt for getting rid of the um, getting rid of the extra. Okay. All right. So let's see. I need to. Um, I'll, I'll put this away for a moment now, and I'll just quickly draw the grid. I mean, we definitely still need the grid. Okay. So what I'll try to show you is how you can do it very efficiently without um, without doing too many, without, without doing any measurements hardly at all, okay? You can start anywhere on any edge. Uh, I'm going to mark uh, four sections, which are gonna be half inch each, right? Because it's two inches wide. So if I mark every half inch, I get my, um, my divisions. Okay, so now again, remember I'm using I'm using this uh, tool, which is a T-square, to move up and down to have a base. If you don't have that, you must use another triangle, which would be used like this, in conjunction with the other triangle, um, which takes practice because you always have to start again from a known line and then move from there. Okay. Um, all right. 
So now that I have these divisions, I'll just quickly try to draw everything real fast. Um, just because the angles work out that way, I can draw my verticals like this. And then the diagonal of this face is actually given by the other angle, my 60 degree angle. So if I turn my triangle this way, I can draw a very nifty diagonal, which is going to give me all the crossing points. And then I can just, I can just draw those lines where they cross those points with the same angle. And for some reason now my squares look funny. They look smaller than they should be. That's, that's good. So I can, um, now do the others. In other words, no more measurements for this cube, right? Zero, really. Um, get this diagonal. I use the same triangle this way. And now I make all my verticals. Um, again, in the spots that I found when I, when I, um, when I drew the diagonals. I'm gonna quickly do it on the other side. I'm gonna zoom in too, so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Okay. I'm not sure that this camera can keep focus if I get too close, but um, no, it doesn't look a little bit out of focus, but maybe it's just my screen. All right, let's just stay a little bit up just to be safe. Um, okay. So yeah, I could, uh, this, is, this is the point where one should tell a story um, because it's a little bit repetitive and after you've seen it once, and so in the past I've told stories how to make a mixtape with real tape, like a set tapes and how long that takes. It takes usually about, I don't know, hours and hours because you have to put the records on the record players. You have to cue it, lift the needle up. You have to cue your tape recorder. Uh, you have to turn the volume down, you have to press pause and record. You have to drop the needle. Well, actually you have to lower the volume. You have to drop the needle, hit press and record up the volume. And then you get the first song just barely started. And then you have to stick around when the song ends because then you have to stop everything in reverse. And you repeat that for about, I don't know, 15 songs each side of the mixtape. And after about four hours, you have a mixtape that you can um, give to your uh, friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. Okay. So the front is done. We will eventually need also the back. So I am going to go ahead and just do that because I know I'm going to need it. So that means now isolating your backs and just sort of disregarding the fronts, um, which is gonna get confusing. So let me just let me just draw a cube now, okay? This is what I need to do. Uh, so because I can literally see it, even though I don't have the grid here, I can just, I really can, um, well, if I don't know exactly where I need to go, I can just quickly do this and I could, you know, mark my spots. I'm reluctant to do that because I, I don't like making spots, but maybe I'll just, for this one, so I'll make them. No, I don't like it. You can do them if you want, but if you do make them really small, I just don't like it because it messes up the drawing a little bit. So I'll just, uh, I'll just draw the lines as I see them. Uh, essentially copying, right? Copying from my sketch with a sure shot without worrying about whether it's precise or not. I know it is. Um, and I just start with the outside. And 
by now you should know your cube by heart. I kind of feel it this, that way for this one. Um, but if you forget, you can always put it back. Like, oh, okay, it goes here. And it goes there. From here to here, from here to here. Going to, um, going to tape these guys. No, actually, I can't tape it because I'll get it. All right, can't have it both ways. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other one here. Yeah, it's it's really hard to like photographically transfer that from here, right, with your eyes. So it's nice you can move it. You can just. So I always go back if you're not sure. Because this is symmetrical, um, I can do my two sides at the same time. Um, okay. So as soon as I do my font here, I will connect to the inside of the cube. because that will make me feel good. I will have some lines. Uh, yeah, so I'll actually just draw the outline now real quick. Put that out of the way for a moment. Um, yeah, as soon as you're sure of some lines being definite, and of course the ones in front are, will be definite regardless of what your design is, you can just go ahead and darken them because it will, um, again, it will make you feel good. Um, in order to do all the stuff I'm doing, you really must tape your drawing down, okay? I mean, there's just, there's just, you know, it's, it's really counterproductive if you don't tape it down because it will be hard to, um, it will be a lot of, a lot more work. Um, okay. So I looked at this again and might as well go ahead and, and connect some of the points to the center, especially the ones in front. Because they they're in front, and if anything, they're going to hide stuff that's in the back. So, um, almost there. Oh, okay, so now we need to do the back. Yeah, because here I'm a little unsure what might happen. Uh, I need to know what that spot is, but I can connect this line. So why don't I just figure this line here? Um, and now I'll quickly draw the grid on the back sides, okay? Uh, for that, For that, I just pick up existing information here and I just bring it across uh, because everything matches. In other words, it, everything is the same, which is also a little bit of a drawback because a lot of lines overlap and sometimes that can be confusing. Um, Okay, same on the other side. Nope, oh, too far there. Right there. 
drawing is getting a little sloppy because I'm accelerating here, but. I'm getting little triangles where, where I should have little crossings. Um, okay, so that's it. So now I just I just identify what I need. So those spots one and two. Um, and notice like that line is parallel to this line, right? So this tip right there, I'm going to draw it right away because I know that's also going to be in front and it's going to be hiding other lines. And then this point connects to this one, but it disappears, but it disappears there. So just want to make sure to do it right. I could still draw it very lightly, the whole thing, and then just darken. Forget what this connects. It connects down to that spot right there. From there to there. Again, it's a it's a it's a parallel line which doesn't look so parallel right now. Why is that? Double check. There, okay, just to go there. Yeah, that looks better. So very light and then just darken the part that I need. And this one is kind of easy because it's symmetrical, right? So I know that these are the two points right there and there. So I quickly do that and we'll be done. And every line is a, is a straight line going through the center. That's it. Um, okay. And then you should look at your drawing and if it feels like, yeah, it's not like really coming forward in terms of your lines. Obviously this one comes out more because again, the shape is more uh, characterized, right? There's more information that shows me what the cube looks like, right? Um, so this would be this view right there. And the other one is less, you know, it's more flat, right? Um, and if I look at these drawings now, yes, my dark, my construction lines are a little dark. So uh, because they are dark, I'm going to darken my object lines. Um, and that way I'll get a little more and perhaps, you know, even the uh, the other side of the cube. You want to you will need to do this if you keep your lines light to begin with. Right. Okay. This morning I was saying that I realized that this paper does catch a little bit of the graphite, but you know, that probably has more to do with dirt being underneath the board. Cause right now I've, after I've done this drawing, I, I don't know, I don't see that much bad stuff. So I think it probably has to do with the boards more than anything else, more than with the paper. Um, Oh, I made a mistake there. Let's see what happened. 
supposed to stop my line there because it's disappearing in the back. Um, this line right here. And instead I darken that. So I'm gonna erase that real quick. Fix it up. And then I think we'll call it finished. There we go. Okay, so that's the drawing. Um, okay, I'm going to check real quick if there is uh, questions. It doesn't look like it. Let's see if people are still still around. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Okay, well, a good two thirds participated. That's nice. Um, okay, I'll uh, I'll just leave the video on. So I just uh, chat if you want me to answer some question or if you'd like to actually talk. Um, I will. Um, I'll stop the recording after this. Um, and then if there is a reason to start it again, because there is a question that's relevant, um, I'll turn it back on. Okay. All right. Um, let's see what was the last, yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's quarter to three. So again, let's just say I'll, I'll leave it on for another 15 minutes until three. Um, and then that, that will be it, okay? So just stay posted for more emails about next class. I think on Thursday I will, um, let me switch back. Okay, so on Thursday, I will um, I will um, work on the cube, okay? I'll, I'll show you how to do the rough, I guess, again. Uh, I mean, most of you were almost done. Um, and maybe, um, right, because there's no more drawings, technical drawings for the cube project. So maybe Thursday will dedicate to making the cube. And then if you can at home, um, that would be great. If um, if you can't for whatever reason, uh, because you need help and you can't move forward, uh, we'll figure it out. Okay, we'll just we'll just leave the cube final cube as a kind of uh, delayed project. Okay, um, and then next week we'll probably start with. Um, um, I can't remember now if, if perspective is, was on the books, but if it wasn't, we might start anyway, just because that way. Uh, we get the dr more drawings done and we can finish the physical model later if we have to, okay? All right, so thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, it's been an experience. Um, I'm glad it seems like it's working. And uh, yeah, just watch your emails for more um, communication, okay? So once again, I'll stop the recording. I'll leave the video on though. Um, so, and the chat on, meaning the meeting on, so that you can still ask me things, okay? All right, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.